In the heart of Rutland, nestled in the Chater Valley, lies a small but curious settlement. Ketton, a village of beauty, history and heritage, which is facing new challenges in the modern world. The village lies in the beautiful Chater Valley, with the river winding a lazy ribbon through the valley floor. A mixture of woods, open meadows, farmland, and gardens. Geeston lies on the southern extremity of the village, at the top of the hill, with views into the Welland Valley nearby. A short walk into the neighbouring valley brings you to a beautiful six-arch stone bridge over the River Welland, which if crossed will lead you to the nearby village of Collie Weston. The construction was completed in 1620 AD and is of great beauty, sitting perfectly against the background of the parish church and the floodplain beyond. Many visitors to the village comment on the loveliness of this setting. The land has an interesting underlying geology. The Rutland Formation, a large bed of limestone, was formed from muds and sand carried down by rivers and occurs in bands of different colours, each with many fossils and shells. At points along the River Chater, large sections of exposed limestone bedrock can be seen. The river is teeming with plants and animals and is the lifeblood of the valley, an essential resource for local wildlife and a place for laughter and fun during the summer months for village residents. The valley is home to a wide range of wildlife. Large mammals such as deer, foxes and badgers roam the woods and fields in search of food. Birdsong accompanies many a walker in Ketton, with particular note to the resurgence of red kites whose population has flourished since they were reintroduced in 1989 and became protected from the aggressive persecution from which they suffered. Insects such as ants and flies all play a role in the ecosystem, providing a food source for birds and other animals. Here, two flies can be seen in a mating ritual and this tadpole grow into a small frog by the early summer. Other invasive species such as rabbits have also found their home in the green places throughout the village. Rarely explorers have sighted the elusive Rutland panther roaming the territories around the village, though reports remain unconfirmed. Native trees such as ash, oak and silver birch dominate where they've been allowed to grow, though there are plenty of conifers in the area also. The desolation of the quarry provides an ideal habitat for hardy pioneer species of plants which can colonise the rocky soils and clay, the beginnings of the regeneration of the area. Some of the older pits are now indeed designated sites of special scientific interest, with rarely seen limestone grasslands emerging. I was fortunate enough to call Ketton my childhood home, and spent many happy summer days exploring the picturesque valley with my friends. The modern village boasts two pubs, a school, a library, a sports centre, a shop, two churches and a number of small businesses, in addition to the major employer, the Cement Works. The history of the village can be traced back many thousands of years. In 1901, for example, two skeletons from the Neolithic period were discovered, as well as socketed axe heads dating back to the Bronze Age around 3,000 years ago. These were discovered during construction at the Ketton Cement Works. The origins of the name Ketton remain uncertain. Some have proposed that maybe the name comes from the main river of the village and that Ketton means River of Ketter, with the latter part of the name coming from the Old English Tun. Others have argued that the name derives from an Old English tribal name, Ketan. A third theory is that the name is not Old English, but Celtic coming from the Celtic word for the river Chater, Cheten, meaning a forest stream. The Doomsday Survey of 1086 found that Cheten had 45 inhabitants, including three serfs. It remained in the hands of the crown until 1156. Ketten was later granted to a Norman of the name Richard de Humez in 1156 AD. Although England had been laid low by the conquest, life had to go on, and the village church, much as it is today, was the centre of daily and weekly life. As in most of the rest of the country, Ketton has made use of a church since the coming of Christianity in the 6th and 7th centuries AD. 
but the older styles of architecture have been replaced. Ketton Parish Church was rebuilt on a very ambitious scale, with a cruciform plan and a central crossing tower. St Mary's Church in its current incarnation is around 800 years old. Its great spire, rising 150 feet towards the heavens, was added in the 14th century. Curiously, the church is constructed of Barnock stone rather than Ketton stone, and one area of particular note is the beautifully carved 11th century western doorway to the church, which remains in remarkable condition to this day. St Mary's still holds regular services, and it is also the site of the War Memorial, where every year the Remembrance Parade takes place. The churchyard, being allowed to become quite overgrown during the spring months, provides a good way to increase biodiversity within the village. The other church in the village resides near the sink stream and is a Methodist church dating from 1864. The oldest homes in the village are now the collection of houses opposite the entrance to the primary school. These humble stone cottages possess some curious features. External buttresses, a carriage arch now bricked up, and inside, gothic arched doorways. Hibbins House, built in 1890, is sited on a crossroads, which was once a toll according to the Turnpike Act of 1829. Another historic area is Red Miles Lane, which has a house dating from 1699 AD and is named after a local family. In 1797, an influential man named Rushout was created Baron Northwick, after whom one of the local pubs is named. The other, the railway, still thrives on Church Lane today. Ketton School was founded in 1830 AD by a certain Miss Sophia Elizabeth Edwards, but in 1857 a new school had to be built to cope with the increasing demands of students. This was further replaced with the modern school in 1969 as the population continued to rise. I spent many happy years here as a child. In 1848, the Midland Railway Company opened the rail line which cut through Aldgate and Geeston. They also opened the Midland Hotel, which survives today. The train station was named Ketton and Collie Weston and was fitted with a beautiful Gothic style architecture. Sadly, the station was closed in the 1960s and was partially demolished, with only the ticket office still in existence today. The village shop still remains another centre of activity, providing essential goods to local residents. The Rutland Brewery, founded by a certain Mr Thomas Molesworth, held an extensive premises adjacent to the Northwick Arms pub. Sadly it closed in 1908, though Brewery House still stands to mark the site. Water was piped to the brewery from springs on Fish Pond Lane. This supply was eventually cut off when the Northwick estate was sold in the early 20th century, forcing the brewery to close. Nearby Orchard House was built in the 18th century and is named so due to its proximity to the large traditional orchard which lies to the north of the High Street. Sadly, this beautiful part of Ketton history has been uprooted and destroyed to make way for a new housing estate. A permanent loss of village history and a blow to the local wildlife which call the orchard home. Here you can see a few comparisons between before and after so-called development. Approved by Rutland County Council. Other notable sites include the Old Bakery,
the Chater Bridge. The Sewage Works. A thriving scout troop, another institution which benefited me as a child. Solar Farm. And the Village Park. Ketton has always been a farming village, and like a typical medieval village, you'll come across evidence of agriculture in the landscape, such as the indents of strip farming left in the land after many generations. Home Farm is situated adjacent to the village shop and retains a beautiful and now listed dovecot. The rest of the farm is to be redeveloped to make way for further housing. The old barn opposite Hunts Lane has now been renovated into housing, however this was once occupied by the Jackson family in the 18th century who were farmers and owned the mill on Empingham Road. Sheep and cows continue to be reared on the open pastures near the wide floodplains of the valley. Additionally, many crops are grown on either side of the valley. Most of the crops are cultivated away from the floodplain, higher on either side of the valley. Lots of local people also keep chickens and small livestock to try and be more self-sufficient. Even in the modern day, Cats Hill Spinney, a local wood, has been renewably harvested as a traditional coppice by a local woodsman, repeating the cycle of harvest and growth which has occurred there for hundreds of years. Quarrying and cement manufacture are an integral part of Ketton's industry and provide many jobs for local people. The current quarry first opened in 1929, it was called the Ketton Portland Cement Company. Lord Northwick came to own the quarries and allowed masons to rent and quarry certain sections. Stone is harvested in the pit which lies to the north of the village. It is typically blasted off the face using dynamite then subsequently loaded into dumper trucks for transportation to the crusher. Here we see a large dumper truck being loaded up with rubble. A continuous stream of dumpers ferries the material from the working face to the crusher. Here the stone is broken into smaller pieces before a conveyor belt ride up to the kiln. Here the limestone is heated and processed into lime. A huge coal field lies behind the factory, the principal heat source of the kiln. The finished product is loaded into lorries or rail wagons for distribution. The works supply a significant portion of the nation's cement. Some look on the quarry as a scar on the landscape, but regeneration efforts will leave behind a haven for wildlife, an area far more diverse than the monocrop agricultural farmland that was there before. Ketton has a vibrant and active local community, and events like the bank holiday car boot sales draw visitors from far afield. All manner of things for sale and food available too. 
The camera on which this film was made was obtained from the Ketten car boot sale for the sum of five pounds. The car boot sale is hosted by the Ketten Sports Centre. They also provide a bowls club, tennis courts, football pitches, a cricket pitch and have a bar. Community events also take place at the parish office and the village hall. In the recent history, we mourned the passing of our Queen, Elizabeth, but it was not so long before that the village celebrated her Platinum Jubilee with great fervour. Bright and brilliant displays of the village's affection for the Queen bring back good memories of her and her reign. Ketten is a beautiful village with a rich history, however it is key that we continue to preserve what makes it so enchanting. Its green spaces, historic buildings, and its sense of community. I hope this film will act as an archive of our beautiful parish in the 2020s, but I also hope that future generations won't only be able to appreciate its beauty in faded photographs and videos. We must work to preserve our village and what makes it special, and to protect Ketten. Thank you for listening.